a very good morning to all my farmer friends my colleagues all the government officials and all the participants attending this webinar on integrated pest management which is an essential component of precision farming by jain irrigation systems limited so integrated pest management is very important nowadays to reduce our losses by pests and also to improve our environment so integrated pest management is uh, comprised of three words integrated it means harmonious use of multiple pest control methods to control single pest or pest complexes most of the crops has got a pest complexes like sucking pest uh, chewing pest and all so when we combine we call it is called integrated pest management and the pest is an organism which is detrimental to the human beings and which causes the economical losses to the human beings and the management the management is based decision based on ecological principles and economic and social considerations so we have to consider all the economic and social uh, considerations while we decide on the pest management so all the three together in the we combinedly form as a integrated pest management so if you see the con trend in con uh, consumption of pesticide in india right from 2000 2001 to 2016 17 the pesticide use is increasing you can see the increased trend of pesticide use it means what the chemical reliance on chemical pesticide is increasing and um, uh, that's what we have to see that we how we can reduce this uh, our dependence over dependence on this pesticide uh, if you see the all india statistics of area under cultivation and under the use of chemical and biopesticide from last in during last 5 years you can see the chemic the area under chemical pesticide is more comparative to almost 10 times more than the area under bio control okay and uh, the bio and chemical control together which you can say partly integrated even very less comparative to the chemical pest management so here itself you can find out that the the, the farmers are more rely, relying on chemical control measures okay so we will see now uh, detail what is uh, ipm so ipm that integrated pest management is a sustainable approach uh, to manage the pest by combining biological cultural cultural mechanical and chemical tool in a way that it minimizes the economic health and environmental risk so when uh, for single method if we use it may not give a good control but when we make all the methods um, uh, when we use them it can give you a very much better control it can reduce uh, uh, your losses and it will improve the environment and all the hazards which you are causing nowadays like air pollution or water pollution it can be reduced through integrated pest management so many people say what is a pest so sometimes if you see a single thing is like people call it as a pest but it is not like that what is a pest so any organism that completes that sorry competes with human for food shelter or other commodities and causes economical losses when it causes the economical lo cause losses then only we call that particular organism as a pest single insect or a small group of insect which are not causing any economic losses we we should not call the call it as a pest so what is pest includes insects fungi viruses birds mammals uh, or plants what like what we call the weeds that threatens to quality or value of a crop that we call as a pest <clears throat> so types of damage by different uh, particularly insect pest is like injury by chewing insects like caterpillar beetles injury by piercing and sucking insects like uh, mealybug white flies thrips aphids scales etc so these all this help us in selection of the particular integrated pest management method to control this kind of pest another uh, some of the insects they are internal borers like uh, borer internal feeders like borers weevils galls then uh, subterranean insects like root worms and store grain products also damaged by the different kinds of pest so this help us in selection of a proper uh, management method Uh, to tackle this uh, pest management now there are two major concepts in integrated pest management or any pest management that is etl and eil so what is etl etl is a economic threshold level 
it is a pest density at which the control measures should be determined to prevent reaching economical injury level so this is the level of the particular pest population at which the control measures must be undertaken from reaching it to the economic injury level once it reaches to the economic injury level then the control measures may not be enough to save our commercial losses and what is economic injury level the economic injury level is the most basic if actually attained by a pest population we result in the economic damage so once we the insect population reaches to the economic injury level then the economical damage happens and sometimes it is possible that even it cannot be recovered also so we have to restrict any pest population at economic threshold level so these two terms are very very important in any pest management program so how this ipm concept started what was the need of this ipm uh, concept to start actually so pesticides as we are aware that pesticides are the effective and quicker tool for pest management so farmers they adopt more first immediately they will adopt these pesticides for management so what happened the over reliance and indiscriminate use of this particular pesticide they cause serious problems to the agro ecosystem and the development of resistance in insects to insecticide it was it is the result of that continuous use of this pesticide so many insects now they have become resistant to the many insecticide so even if we spray they are not not they are not giving any control to, or they are not responding to that particular pesticide resurgence overuse also it is causing the resurgence of the other sucking pest outbreak of secondary pest into primary nature so what happened when we spray this uh, pesticide their natural enemies they get killed so what happened so secondary pest also become a minor pest so so this is the, the another drawback of uh, excessive pesticide use environmental contamination and residue hazard so when we use overuse of pesticide it causes air pollution water pollution soil pollution and also the residue will be uh, stored in the particular plant products or soil for long term so it causes a residue hazard destruction of natural enemies of insect pests so in nature there are uh, natural enemies are there for but every insect pest there are natural enemies but when we use pesticide and sometime without understanding the proper stage or when the even if there is no pest we go for spraying that causes the destruction of the natural enemy so expenses on pesticide equipments labor etc they are going very high when we completely rely on the pesticide and sometimes even it is not working all this cost also goes waste so all these problems contributed to a new way of thinking concerning the pest control practices that is integrated approach of pest control all these problems were um, uh, addressed through uh, integrated pest management nowadays so another picture we can see why ipm we require so food safety so what is food safety and what is food security there are two different terms food safety means safe food so whenever we eat any food it should be pesticide free it should be residue free so this is why we require a food safety every should everyone should get a safe food it should not have any residues so when spraying and all all this all this uh, uh, care we have to take uh, while spraying of this pesticide and what is food security so we have so much of high population also we are doing export so we should have sufficient food to provide to our population in coming time so unless we do proper pest management we cannot produce a high high yield so only the uh, uh, the agronomical methods like fertilizer application or planting methods that may not be enough to give a product give a, a production but the proper pest management method also it will boost up the high yields so that we can do the food security for our future purpose also for our existing and upcoming uh, population so food safety and food security these two terms are very well addressed through ipm farmers and worker health the farmers and workers as we are aware these are the basic um, component of any agriculture so or you can say these are the 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 people working in the grassroots level so we have seen so many examples of uh, pesticide poisoning in farmers and workers workers so they are get they are more affected or exposed to this kind of uh, particular pesticide so this also address to the their uh, safety of these farmers and workers uh, by uh by adopting other methods of pest management and the, the, our reliance on pesticide to be reduced 
and environment health and safety so when we go with ipm we so we large up to large extent we control on pesticides so air pollution water pollution can be controlled and we can uh, lead a safe environment for uh, for our all components of the um, environment like birds animals and human beings also so this why why this um, ipm is very important from a future point of view as well as the present point of view so what are all the objectives of uh, ipm so ipm as we know integrated pest management it promotes natural control so we have to start with the natural control like uh, whatever available natural like birds or even the the temperature or the humidity it itself they control the 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 samba pest up to certain extent so it promotes natural control it protects human health by application of pesticides at a proper interval and giving more importance on prevention and other methods it protects a human health minimize negative impacts to non target organisms so non target organisms which are not a particular pest but they are part of this environment so they are well being protected enhance the general environment as we are uh, seen so far that we avoid all the environmental pollution so general environment is getting better and better so uh, be most likely to produce long term and beneficial results so the particularly pesticide when we use they are very short term results they are they may be for a week or 15 days but when we adopt ipm it is a long term uh, impact on the all this uh, societal or the environmental issues be cost effective in the short and long term so as we are adopting all the methods so even some methods can be undertaken at the farmer level itself where cost can be very much reduced so it also very much cost effective and easily and efficiently implemented this particularly all these farmers they are very much aware of all this most of these practices and these are very easy to implement in the farmers field so uh, so these are the very very important objectives of ipm why we should um, adopt ipm so what are the essential requirements of ipm so any technology or any method when we adopt it has it you have to meet its prerequisites so without knowing a proper pathway to for this particular technology we cannot be successful so proper identification of the key pest insect pest is very important a particular crop like for example mango it has got a major pest of mango hopper for a cotton there is a major pest of heliosis for a pomegranate there is a anar caterpillar like that this we should understand what is the pro, what is the key insect pest of that particular crop second one is biology and behavior of the pest so biology means what what is the life cycle where it lays the eggs where it pupates or where it, where it completes its uh, pupation and uh, where the what is the feeding uh, behavior of uh, adult what is the uh, so these all kind of behavior or uh, pattern of insects it helps us to decide on our uh, control measures so biology and behavior of the pest is very important natural regulating factors natural factors as we see in temperature um, rain humidity all these factors we should uh, take in we should take into consideration uh, while planning of ipm need to control measures so we should understand what is the need to control that particular pest so when we know yes this is exceeding the etl then we should go for ipm so that, that's what we have to understand what is the need to control measures then timing of control measures timing is well, is a, such a critical uh, input of this ipm that we should understand when the particular pest population is high or when the particular uh, pest is feeding so that timing when we know the management of the pest is very easy particularly the most of the some of the moths are nocturnal or the the, the hoppers they are more active during morning 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock so like that or the thrips they are more active during the sunny sunny period of the day so when we know the timing of this particular pest infestation we can make this uh, control measure in a very efficient way selection of suitable control measure now selection of suitable control measure is what what kind of method we have to adopt like a mechanical control or a cultural control biological control or a chemical control or chemical control means what kind of sprayer this this help us on this all the both factors help us to decide on a proper control measure then farmer participation is very important in uh, ipm because if one farmer do it may not be enough so all this particularly a group of farmer when they know when the farmer education uh, we enhance on these all the aspects then the ipm will be very much successful so farmers participation in ipm is a real success um, of this uh, ipm and government supports so government has got so many 
laboratories for biocontrol agents also uh, they have other funds available to the farmer so government support is very much important in um, ipm so when it done on done on large scale a particular area problem can be particular definitely it can be solved so any uh, any technology or any new method it has got its own tools to the tools means the method what we, from which we can uh, carry out this particularly um, uh, program or when we what is called, what we call as a ipm ipm so the first major tool is monitoring the first start with monitoring monitoring is what inspection inspection of your field so which is to be done regular inspection of the crop by walking inside and all corners of the plot so uh, inspection when we start it can be done on the corners of the field center part of the field so that particularly sometime uh, in one corner the pest will be available another it may not be available or it may be available in the center but it may not be available in the corner so we have to find out what kind of pest is available what is the intensity of that particular pest correct identification of the pest is very crucial so when we during monitoring we have to correct identify the pest whether it is a hopper whether it is a thrips or whether it is a feed or like that what is what kind of caterpillar whether it is a actual pest or not that we have to identify so that inspection helps us in identifying the proper pest so keep track of the pest and their potential damage so when we inspect we we have to keep the track of the pest their growth pattern and the potential damage so uh, to avoid a uh, severe damage we have to keep the uh, pest monitoring this provides knowledge about the current pest and crop situation inspection so uh, some crop has got single pest it has got complexes so we we by inspection we know what kind of pests are available and what is the crop situation whether it is in flowering stage or fruiting stage or harvesting stage uh, it it gives all the track of our uh, crop situation as well as pest so helpful in selecting the best possible combination of pest management methods so inspection or monitoring help during for selection of the best possible combination um, so sometime uh, you can go with the cultural method combined with the mechanical method and if the both are not working then only we can think of a further method like a chemical control method like borers and all you can easily find easily can take out with the hooking and uh, also then when when it is not coming by hook then only we go for further pesticide treatment so it helps in all the way what we have seen so far the so selection of the ipm method inspection monitoring is very very important you can see the uh, small uh, micro lens is available so this kind of lens every farmer should have to see a minute insect and identification of proper insect is very important for example you can see monitoring example mango hopper you can see a leaf and uh, there is a split uh, back side of the leaf and the dorsal part you can see that in the midrib the white color egg is there so this egg laying is just happened just a one or two days old only egg and then the same next picture is a crinkling and you can see the curling of the leaf so wherever this eggling has happened from there the leaf starts curl and you can see the curling of the leaf and you can see the the due to some adult, some leaves have come out and they have started sucking the cell sap so leaf curling has happened so by seeing these symptoms itself we can understand that the mango hopper uh, is going to come or it might have come so uh, if the already if the eggs have hatched so this help us to get immediate ready for pest management and third part is the adult you can see the third photo is adult of mango hopper when it goes to this level then the controlling is very difficult now they are winged so they are flying but when it is a, a egg or a nymph stage they are uh, comparatively stationary moving only uh, on the particular shoot they are not flying so monitoring help us in controlling the pest well well ahead to reach by reaching its to adult population which starts mating and further increase the population so this helps the monitoring in a pest management method so you can so we can continue the tools of ipm is a cultural methods so cultural methods they are all the traditional methods what the, the farmers are following from their uh, from their long time and um, by adopting them in a pest management method it can reduce their dependence on the pesticides so inoculum reduction so proper sunlight distribution and removal of affected portion so when sunlight is ample in the farm lot of insect pests get control 
and the the removal of the affected portions like particularly uh, like the fruits have fallen down or fruits are infected by the fruit flies so when we destruct those kind of fruits so uh, that reduces the inoculum in the in the farm crop location crops of adjacent field should be taken into consideration so if the nearby whatever you are taking care, care even if you are taking care but the another farmer are not taking care not taking care or the particular adjacent farmer's crop is also susceptible for the pests of our same crop then we have to keep watch on our crop whether it is being infested by the adjacent farmers uh, also so crop location is also very important trap crops planting of preferred crop by the pest near main crop and destroying them so this is a method uh, called refuge method so we plant castor around um, cotton or marigold around um, uh, tomato so this attracts the pest which is already infecting uh, infesting our major crop so then we can control this pest well on this trap crop so that um, it, it, we can avoid it to go to the main crop so these are called particularly trap crop clean culture remove weeds and alternate host so you can see the mealybugs they survive on the parsinium so most of this uh, weeds they are host for a many major uh, insects so clean culture helps to keep them under uh, our control maneuvering and fertilizer so healthy crop withstand the pest attack when we do proper manu maneuvering fertilizer application through fertigation or drip irrigation method they boost the plant growth very well so healthy plants even if there is some uh, pest attack it can tolerate the pest attack so keeping the plants healthy with proper nutrition nourishment all it helps to have a better ipm <clears throat> pruning and thinning pruning most of these horticulture crops they are they require pruning so pruning of unwanted branches it in, it in, it it will improve the sunlight inside the uh, plant canopy as well as fruit fruit thinning prevents infestation particularly for mango fruit borer you can see in the picture when the two fruits are joined the fruit borer goes inside and from outside we cannot see so the fruit thinning help us uh, to keep this pest away a crop residue disposal crop residue burn or decompose by crushing to destroy the infesting pest like borer like amla stem borer if you keep that residue there only amla stem borer or mango stem borer um they will be there uh, remain inside only so when we burn them the all insect stages also they get burned with that so crop residue disposal is important unless otherwise you can uh, powder it them and decompose them so pest resistant varieties this is another important uh, part of ipm so use of resistant varieties is uh, is a prevention approach in ipm so breeding of pest resistance uh, is a continuous process so these are bred and selected when available in order to protect against key pests so uh, particular variety when it is resistant to a particular insect it is the best tool where we can completely reduce a, a pesticide requ uh, requirement for that particular pest so more emphasis in future to be given on pest resistance varieties uh, next uh, important tool is the mechanical control so these are based on the knowledge of the pest behavior and it encourages the use of manual devices and machines so for example hand picking the removal and destruction of egg masses larvae pupae and adult beetles borers and weevils these are the example of hand picking so what happened when we see the uh, particularly for example uh, slug caterpillars or the egg masses of uh, uh, rice stem borer so when we collect them and destroy them we directly killing the pest without before their emergence itself so that that is the uh, the way to reduce the uh, pest population in coming time and uh, saving our own pesticides and uh, efforts on that particular so hand picking is a very important tool installation of bird perches you can see in picture bird perches so when we uh, provide the bird shelter for perches the bird sits on that and it, they can easily sight a particular uh, insects larvae and they can feed on them banding mealy bugs or rodents so my banding is done by alkazin sheet uh, it's like a plastic sheet and it is uh, fixed with um, uh, for a kind of glue or uh, grease so mealy bugs crawling from the soil to the trunk they can be get stuck on that sheet itself or the aluminum sheet is uh, put on to in a round shape on the coconut or areca nut so the rodent uh, climbing can be controlled so that is the called as the banding uh, so it all comes under mechanical uh, method wire mesh screens for borers and fruit sucking moths uh, in uh, for example pomegranate fruit sucking moths 
so those farmers uh, cultivating pomegranate uh, they are suffering huge from fruit sucking moth and it is more uh, active during night time so when when uh, the control measures are very difficult so uh, covering all this completely uh, the plant it helps um, entry uh, and uh, it helps uh, to prevent the entry of, of this fruit sucking moth and the entire crop can be saved so these are need based uh, interventions we must to take to make our uh, crop uh, commercially viable so we should have knowledge of all this uh, technology first so another very important is trapping so light traps uh, can attract stem borers moths uh, we can install a light trap in the center of the of the field and uh, periodically we have to go and uh, observe and even they catch we have to kill kill them uh, this kind of stem borers or moth bait traps bait traps mostly mostly used for fruit flies sticky traps hopper creeps and just you can see the sticky trap yellow sticky traps and the hoppers are stuck into that so this helps us in monitoring so also it is a kind of monitoring tool so by seeing the increasing pest population on the sticky boards we we should be ready we can get ready for our uh, other further pest management methods window pans where water is kept and and the, in the pans and the particular insects they get attracted and fall into the water traps then uh, pheromone trap fruit fly the fruit fly is a very dangerous pest for uh, some of the fruits as well as most of the cucurbitaceous vegetable vegetables so uh, the lure is fixed uh, inside the trap and the male adults they they come and they get trapped in the fruit fly trap so this is a really a very good innovations and farmer must use to reduce the pest population of this particular insect uh, mechanical destruction leaf webber slug caterpillar hooking out of stem borer these are examples of mechanical destruction leaf webber in particular in mango or support you can if you see these are the minor pests but slowly becoming major pests and the slug caterpillars initial instar they they will be in a group so when we collect them and destroy them in a group we, we can achieve the pest control in early stages itself and we can save our pesticides so these methods are a uh, very important tool in uh, ipm next tool is uh, biological control biological control uh, where we use the bio control agents okay like uh, uh, yeah, beneficial insects or uh, micro organisms to control the pest but uh, it's a little critical we should have some knowledge on uh, aspects of particular crop so implementation of biological control is decided on tolerable injury so the particular plant should, the plant should tolerate certain amount of pest injury as biocontrol does not provide immediate pest control like as that of chemical control so it takes some time to establish in the field so uh, the crop should tolerate a minimum injury uh, to the crop value of the crop mostly suitable for low value crops than high value crops biocontrol is suitable for mostly low value crops and your all perennial perennial nature of the crop most suitable for perennial crops like orchard and then annual crop so it takes some more time for establishment in the particular orchard so it is more suitable for uh, perennial uh, orchards uh, particularly the bio biological control uh, also the number of pests to be controlled if more number of pests on a single crop uh, one crop may have something 10 or 12 crops 12 pests okay so that time we have to be little cautious and following uh, consideration are to be taken while selection of this bio, bio control agent biological control that avoid harmful cultural practices as if deep plowing even uh, this uh, biological control agent agents also may be uh, harboring in the soil sometimes so we have to be taken care, we have to take care of proper uh, uh, cultural practices harmful cultural practices should be avoided when we go for biological control selective and safer insecticides to be used so uh, the insecticide which are safe which are not very harmful to this bio bio, bio control agents you have to uh, select for survival of the bio control agents do not kill all the pests you know bio control is they are directly feeding on another uh, our pest only so if we if we kill all the pests or remove all the pests then the survival of this bio control agent also become difficult so we have to allow some pest population for this uh, survival of this bio control agent so farmer educations on above aspects so above aspects farmer should be well thorough uh, in all this uh, when adopting this bio bio control agent bio control biological control 
conserve and enhance existing biocontrol agents so we have to conserve conservation means uh, existing uh, biocontrol agents we have to uh, we should not lose them and also enhance existing like uh, mass raising can be done and that can be uh, again put into the environment or particular our crop ecosystem so that they can build up their population so these are the biological control uh, uh, we have to take into consideration when we select uh, for a particular crop so how the biological control is achieved you can see uh, if a particular pest is there but they, we don't have a biological control agent for controlling that pest so we can introduce uh, a bio bio agent which is non native so we can introduce from any other part where it, that it may be available there so we can introduce in our part augmentation that is mass sharing in laboratories and release we can uh, we have a lot of biocontrol uh, laboratories in india and also it can be also undertaken in a small farmers group also we can do the mass sharing of this particular biocontrol agents and when uh, they are ready to release we can release in our ecosystem to increase their population so that's called augmentation and conservation of uh, native bio agents so we can provide some ecological engineering plants you can see the plants where uh, they the other pests comes like a feeds and then the chrysoperla feeds on that so this kind of things we have to follow in our ipm program for particularly a bio biological control method so examples of biocontrol agents like trichogramma species green leaf wig bug asrophagus papaya is a very successful uh, biocontrol for papaya mealy bug so it's very difficult to control papaya mealy bug when it is on the fruit when the fruit is directly edible part so the asparagus papaya is a very important uh, introduction uh, in the papaya uh, for mealy bug control so this kind of this is a very successful uh, example so biological control also helps uh, to control or to bring the population down up to certain extent in ipm program so you can see that these are the ecological engineering plants which we can plant in a border or on the center of the plot or in the patches of the in the particular plot like cluster bean carrot sunflower uh, french bean alfalfa maize mustard so this this will help to attract most of these natural enemies and to survive them on the particular small insect pests which are feeding on this crop and to build up this population of our bio agents this this plants help much uh, natural enemies you can see natural enemies uh, like uh, chrysoperla uh, <clears throat> then uh, praying mantis spiders all these um, uh, uh, our beneficial insects uh, which are available in our, in our ecosystem itself so we can protect them when should have ident proper identification of these uh, biocontrol agents and uh, they are not a pest so we should uh, try to distinguish between the a pest and a beneficial insect okay so these are all the biocontrol agents which are available naturally also but that population sometime may not be enough that's why we have to do augmentation that is mass rearing and releasing in the uh, particular crop ecosystem so predator diversity in mango you can see uh, these are the spiders so they are also eating directly the adults and larvae and the, uh, the presence of spider actually indicates that there is a pest is available in your orchard so uh, the presence of spider you should get alert that the particular pest is um, we have to keep watch uh for controlling that particular pest uh the part of biocontrol is the microbial control so microorganism microbes they are we are using for control of this uh, pest so it is specific and non targets are not killed so by microbial control in microbial control the microbes they are very target specific for example uh, hnpv and snpv so heliothic uh, heliothis pest is only controlled by the heliothis nuclear polyadrenosis virus and uh, in uh, snpv controls only spodoptera so they are very target specific and it causes no pollution problem there is uh, like microbes so the, there are no pollution uh, environment pollution problem it is safe for human wildlife and environment so it is very safe it is compatible with all other pest management methods it can be it can be applied with other plant uh, protection measures also so this is a, a very plus point to all the farmers by using microbial control uh example hnpv snpv then lecanestinum lichen lucini trichoderma pseudomonas metarrhizium so there are even uh, many uh, more microbial agents are available uh, for control of this pest 
So we have to definitely think of all these um, different methods of pest management uh, to make um, uh, the pest control very economical and uh, uh, to reduce environmental pollution. So, so far we have seen uh, biological control, mechanical control, cultural uh, methods to control. Another important tool of IPM is the physical methods. So hot water treatment for fruit flies. So uh, during the maturity of the mango fruit, for example, the fruit flies, they, are, they lay egg in, in the outer uh, rind of this fruit. So when we provide hot treatment, hot water treatment of 40 degrees centigrade, uh, for five minutes, so it is easily uh, get uh, controlled. The egg stages get destroyed of uh, these fruit flies. Cold storage, prevent insect breeding. In the cold storages, it does, the temperature does not allow, allow insect to breed. Reduction of moisture content of grains help to prevent from the attack of store grain space. So this is another physical control method. Energy radiation and light traps. So these are also um, used as a physical uh, control method. So tools of IPM, another very important tool is genetic method, use of sterile male technique. So here the males are sterile and the sterile males are released in, in the ecosystem. So where they cannot, um, uh, they cannot mate with the female to further uh, uh, multiplication of their species. So this use of sterile male technique is a very efficient method of uh, pest, pest management. And the regulatory methods like foreign quarantine and domestic quarantine. So quarantine word is now very much uh, popular due to coronavirus. So it's a similar kind uh, for particularly in agriculture. So foreign quarantine, so when we bring any uh, new uh, seed or any planting material from uh, outside the country where, which we are importing. So this quarantine is done at uh, airports and uh, seaports. So, so as to uh, this new pest uh, should not come into our uh, our ecosystem. So this is called foreign quarantine. Once it is free, it is found free, then only it is allowed to come into our uh, our environment. So that is called foreign you know, foreign quarantine. Another one is a domestic quarantine. Domestic quarantine means within the country also, from one region to another region. So the, this kind of insect pest they migrate through through planting material. So wherever it is more affected, it is not allowed to move that particular planting material to the non-affected area. So that is called a domestic quarantine. So this is also a very important uh, tool of IPM. And if we follow all these methods, all the tools, definitely we can reduce um, uh, pest menace uh, through very economical way. Now, when all this particular, all this what, uh, methods what we have seen like cultural, biological, mechanical or legal, um, uh, regulatory methods when all these are not working or they fail to keep the plant pest population below economic loss then only the chemical control comes into action. So chemical control should be the last uh, uh, resort for this pest management and the chemicals they include insecticides, uh, chemosterilants, antifeedants, attractants, repellents, semiochemicals, uh, insect growth regulators, fungicide, these all uh, chemical control, uh, uh, chemical control tools are there. So, so far uh, farmers are directly depending on the insecticide. So before going to the chemical uh, control measures, we should think of all the above control measures. And uh, as I told, it should be the last uh, resort for pest management. So use of pesticide should be, um, when we go for chemical control method, the pesticide should be need based. When it is only needed, then only we should go for uh, uh, this pesticide. It should be judicious. It means only a proper dosage should be followed and particularly a small, wherever there is infestation in there, there only have to be followed. And based on the pest surveillance survey, when we do, uh, wherever it is available, there only we have to uh, do the pest, uh, pesticide application. Uh, and economic threshold level we have to consider. Unless and until it has reached to the economic threshold level, then only we should do a chemical control measures. If it is below economic threshold level, we should try only the other uh, methods for pest management. So while going for chemical control, we must understand what to spray. So which chemical we have to spray. So particularly if it is a sucking pest, what kind of sucking insecticide do you require, systemic insecticide require, or if it is a chewing type, what kind of contact or stomach poison we require, all these things, what to spray, we should definitely know. So we should know what is, what is the pest and for that particular pest, what is the chemical. 
now we is required when to spray what when to spray means what is the timing so what what is the ideal time to control this pest so particularly larval stage is easy to control or nymphal stage is easy to control then the adults so when to spray so some only simply the chemical is available and we are going blindly spray it should not be done where to spray so what are the plant parts affected what is the uh, the, the site where it attacks more that way we should know where to spray and how to spray how to spray means what what kind of sprayers we can use uh, whether it is a, a bulk sprayer or whether a small sprayer that what is the choice of pesticide applic application methods also we should be uh, we should take into consideration so that it will have a minimum losses of the pesticides or no losses of the pesticide pest defender ratio must be observed defender means like predators or parasite if the predators or parasites or natural enemies are more available Uh, on that particular time so we can either postpone the control method uh, or we can avoid for some time till the life cycle of this particular defender is completed so this we have to see uh, majorly relatively safe pesticide should be selected example neem based or bio pesticide if the plant population pest population is low we have to see select a relatively safer pesticide neem oil or Uh, other bio pesticide which are not uh, targeting the uh, bio control agent uh, if pest is present in strips or isolated patches whole feed need not to be so if a particularly small patch only affected or a small isolated patch is affected we should not go for entire spray of the orchard so where which is not needed at all so uh, unnecessarily the natural predators are getting killed also the cost of uh, econ cultivation is increasing so this is the very uh, important uh, aspects you should keep in mind when we go for chemical control method so in a nutshell how to how we will see how to execute ipm finally how to execute so all the methods we know but when to how to execute first is a set action threshold based on the pest population set an action threshold a point at which the pest control measures must be taken so there is a call etl it economic threshold level so for example for mango hopper it is a five hoppers per panicle so when you know that it is now five hoppers per per, per panicle and is now exceeding in the coming time it will exceed then the pest control measures to be taken so select an action threshold is very important second one is monitoring to identify the pest monitor the pest identify accurately and to take appropriate control measures this is second important tool prevention as the first step prevent pest from becoming a threat use cultural methods so cultural methods what we have seen so far like uh, uh, pruning thinning all all these uh, methods we can use as a preventive measures first once about three methods indicate that the pest control measures are required and prevention and mechanical control measures are not enough to manage the pest then only additional pest control measures can be applied like targeted spraying of pesticide so this is the uh, how we can execute the ipm selection of action threshold monitoring the pest prevention try prevention if it is not working then only go for chemical then try mechanical or other methods and when they are also not working then only go for pesticide spraying so these are simple four steps to execute uh, ipm now we will see the uh, vegetable is another very important uh, uh, big group of uh, crop which are regularly needed by our daily uh, it's a daily consumed product so we can see the yield losses due to major insect pest in vegetables so you can see uh, tomato fruit borer it causes almost 24 to 65% losses dbm that is diamond back moth in cabbage it causes around 17 to 99% losses brinjal shoot and fruit borer you can see 11 to 93% chilies 12 to 19% thrips 90% in okra fruit borer 22% so if you see combine all the together average losses um, uh, due to major insect pest is 40% average losses so even if you adopt any best planting methods or you apply even a good fertilizer good pesticide good geometry but if you failed to do plant protection you will lose average 40% crop so your revenue will be down by almost average 40% which is a great uh, loss for the particular year so what crop we are growing what is the potential pest of our crop and what extent it can cause the damage it's all vulnerable stages all 
when to apply this particular IPM, all this information is very important if you see this table. So to avoid uh, so much of losses to our uh, crop and our revenue. So as we have seen so many methods like uh, trap crop and all. So these are the combination of different intercropping uh, uh, in vegetable pest, for vegetable pest management. So cabbage plus carrot, if you go for uh, uh, carrot interplanting in cabbage, you can control, uh, can uh, minimize um, uh, the attack of diamond back moss. Broccoli plus fava bean, flea beetle, cabbage plus french bean for root fly, cabbage plus tomato or mustard, diamond back moss. So these are some of the examples when we go for interplanting, we can reduce uh, uh, damage to our major crop. So these are the biocontrol agents recommended in vegetable crops. So these are mostly available in many of the shop or agriculture universities. Uh, Trichogramma brasiliensis, 2,50,000 parasitized eggs per hectare in under in inundative methods or inundative release and 50,000 parasitized eggs per hectare on a weekly inoculative release. So this is the dose of the trichogramma brasiliensis and the target request is okra shoot and fruit borer and tomato fruit uh, borer. So this what they egg like in the particular this insects the, uh, the pest egg and uh, they feed on the egg and that way it controls the uh, that particular pest. Trisoperla zoscrovi, so 50,000 first install larvae per hectare weekly release. It, um, it is good for okra aphids and cabbage aphid control. HNPV 250 larval extract per hectare at tenders interval for tomato fruit borer. And uh, Spodoptera uh, nuclear polyhydrase virus 250 larval extract per hectare. It is good for Spodoptera litura. Then Bacillus thuringiensis is BT. It's like powder based formulation. Uh, 500 gram active ingredient per hectare at tender interval. It gives good control against uh, diamond back moth, uh, shoot and fruit borer in Binjal, okra, and tomato fruit borer. So these are the biocontrol agents recommended for vegetable crop. Sometimes we don't know this kind of biocontrol agents are available, but there are so many laboratories by government also. So if we know something knowledge about the, their availability, we can uh, incorporate in our pest management system. So these are the important uh, considerations um, of the particular uh, pest population, what we call as ETL, economic threshold level. So you can see the pest uh, DBM, the diamond back moth of cabbage. So 10 larvae per plant at tilling stage. So we have, when we see 10 larvae of diamond, cab, uh, diamond back moth at tilling stage, we have to go for uh, management. Cauliflower aphids, 30 aphids per plant. Chili mites, single mite per leaf. Chili thrips, two thrips per leaf, white fly, five to ten flies. So these are tomato fruit, or one larva per plant or two percent fruit damage. So these are the economic threshold level. So at before coming to this level, we should try other methods. Once it reaches to the economical threshold level, then we can take intervention by chemical methods. But other methods we should try uh, so that the population doesn't reach to this economical threshold level. So uh, there are so many crops and this uh, particularly the concepts or tools they are applied, they are same for all the crops. Only the, the strategy may vary crop to crop or the season of that particular crop. So we can see the IPM interventions in tomato. So uh, particularly a tomato fruit borer, which is a major pest of tomato. Uh, so collection and destruction of damaged fruits and grown up caterpillar, the fruits which have been already infested by the uh, caterpillar that can be collected, collected and destructed. And the grown-up grown larvae, whenever they are uh, sighting, we can uh, mechanically destruct them. Uh, intercropping, interplanting of American tall marigolds and tomato seedling at one is to say 16 rows. So one row of uh, marigold and 16 rows of tomato. This uh, method can be followed uh, as a trap crop for American tall marigold uh, mari uh, for uh, tomato fruit borer. Setup of a uh, ferment trap with halilure at uh, 12 per hectare. This is also very efficient to control directly adult. Adult will get uh, trap into the pheromone. Then the release of uh, trichogramma pretiosum at 1 lakh uh, numbers per hectare per release at an interval of 7 days starting from flower initiation. 
stage based on the ETL of 10% damage. So, uh, as we have seen, these biocontrol agents, they are very much promising in uh, lower population. When the pest population is low, they are very much uh, very effective tool to manage them. And uh, as they control the egg itself, so uh, further uh, hatching and uh, further multiplication in the, in the uh, our crop can be reduced. For helicor parmigera, HNPV, <clears throat> 1.5 to 10 to 12 POB per hectare. So these are all the biocontrol agents for uh, managing this tomato fruit borer. For sporotetra, HNPV, and uh, bacillus thuringiensis also helps to manage this tomato fruit borer at 2 gram per liter. So when all these tools, when we follow, then definitely the plant population will be under ETL. And when these are not working sometime, sometime what happened over cultivation or monocropping, uh, sometime the crop, uh, the pest population is so high, then we have to go for chemical at the last resort. So one, any one of this chemical can be spread for control of tomato fruit borer, like as a direct in 1%. <clears throat> is AC, uh, 2 ml per liter, indoxicarb, uh, flubendamide, uh, quinolfos, it can be used for management of the tomato fruit borer. Another uh, regularly used vegetable is the brinjal shoot, brinjal, and the brinjal shoot and fruit borer is a major, major pest. So most of these pesticides, they are uh, sprayed on this brinjal sometime today, and immediately within two days, they are harvested and uh, even the, the fruits are sold in market, which is very hazardous. So IPM for this particular brinjal shoot and blur definitely helps to reduce the pest, uh, pesticide use in brinjal. So remove the affected terminal shoots showing boreholes, uh, uh, brinjal uh, tree, uh, sorry, brinjal plant will show uh, uh, bending of the apical tips where we can see this um, particular uh, shoot borer is inside. So that uh, removal of the shoots can and burning them will be effective. Remove the affected fruits and destroy. You can see the excreta coming out the fruit. You can easily cite that is a larva. So these fruits are completely unmarketable. So those can be cut and um, destroyed. Avoid uh, continuous cropping of uh, brinjal crop. Oh, continue cropping of the same brinjal should be avoided uh, to give uh, ch this uh, chain of this particular insect where to uh, affect. So continuous growing should be avoided. Grow the varieties with long and narrow fruits in endemic areas. These are uh, supposed to be give a lesser uh, damage, uh, like long and narrow fruits varieties that can be tried. Install ferment trap at 12 per hectare. Encourage the activity of larval parasitoids as we have seen the bio biological control agent. So this may be available in a local um, bio biological control laboratories or if we know some uh, knowledge on natural available, we can conserve them for our within our uh, farm. Avoid use of synthetic pyrocytes. Synthetic pyrocytes, they cause resurgence of secondary pests, so we can avoid them. Although they give quick knockdown, but it has got long-term bad impact. Avoid using insecticide at the time of fruit maturation and harvest. So fruit maturity state and harvest within immediately to tomorrow to harvest. Today you should not spray. So we should keep into mind a waiting period of particular pesticides. Neem seed kernel extract 5% or Spray any one of the following chemicals starting from one month after planting at 15 days interval. When all these above methods are not working and um, uh, we have must go to chemical control method, then only we should select uh, any one of these uh, insecticide as a directin or chloropyrifos, dimethoate, imamectin, benzoate, um, or flubendamide at given doses we can uh, use for to control this brinjal shoot and fruit borer. Uh, another important field crop is rice. As I told, all the crops we cannot cover, but the major crop, just uh, to give a methodology, uh, we are just going through this uh, integrated pest management model for a particular crop. So for rice stem borer, ETL is 25% dead heart symptoms. You can find the dead hearts, white color dead hearts in the farm. So 25% dead hearts is a uh, time to take action against uh, stem borer. ATL, uh, the action threshold level is two egg masses per meter square. You can see the egg mass in the photograph, brown color, that's the egg mass. So if you see this two egg masses per square meter, you can go for uh, management of this particular pest. So at ATL, uh, release egg parasitoid trichogramma japonicum for the management of the rice cellar stem borer. So uh, they, are, they will be available in a local uh, agriculture university. You can uh, release them. 
spraying neem seed kernel extract control stem borer clip the seedling tip before transplanting to eliminate egg masses so when we transplant seedling this mostly this uh, stem uh, this eggs will be available on the uh, seedling tip itself so that can be clipped off and uh, then planting can be done collect and destroy the egg masses in main field use ferment traps and uh, when these things are uh, not working or when the pest population exceed we can go for selection of any one of this pesticide to control the uh, rice stem borer or to manage the rice stem borer uh, in case of ip mean mango follow clean cultivation use of yellow sticky traps for hopper monitoring um, use of fruit fly trap to monitor fruit flies use of botanicals like neem based products so we have experienced that the neem products they are very well in when they are used in a lower pest population so they can control even up to 10 to 15 days we can get rid from the mango hopper particularly use of bioinsecticide agents like lecanicidem lecanin uh, mechanical killing of stem borer slugs and webers this is um, very very effective we are doing practically every year last option to be used is the chemicals by following proper pre harvest pre harvest interval so uh, last option as i am telling right from beginning the chemical choice should be the last option when other methods are not working and we have to keep in consideration the pre harvest interval of that particular pest uh, pesticide so coming to the phi for example every crop has got and every insect uh, insecticide got has got different phi for that particular crop Uh, if you go to dppqs site uh, major use of pesticides you can find, you can get this phi for all the crops for example imidacloprid in mango for mango hopper uh, the phi is 45 days so if you spray imidacloprid against mango hopper you should not harvest the mango fruit for 45 days from the date of spraying similarly for buprofen it is 20 days lambdacyl is 7 days so these when we follow this uh, phi pre harvest interval our uh, food will be definitely residue free and we can definitely give a very safe food to the our uh, society uh, for some fungicides like azathioprine uh, for anthracnose it is 5 days copper oxychloride anthracnose 10 days so these are just examples but the whatever crop we are growing the list is available on site or particularly label also it will have the phi given so when we follow these things properly definitely we can achieve a very good pest management with a safe food to the uh, to the people okay so all these aspects are to be very very important in uh, ipm so uh, we have seen ipm in detail so advantages of the integrated pest management it fits better in national economy more efficient and cheaper method it avoid uh, upsetting the balance of nature minimizes the residue hazards of pesticide so these are the major advantages of ipm and every farmer or a group of farmers should target ipm as the major uh, pest management uh, technique uh, lastly not to forget application of pesticide should be done last option of pest and disease control uh, do the cultivation in most suited climate and soil condition so unnecessarily don't try to cultivate the crop which is which is not suitable in the climatic condition particular or the soil follow recommended package of practices timely fertigation pest uh, uh, then uh, spacing everything follow timely or properly uh, give preference to natural and biological control measures so before planting the crop itself plan the natural and biological control keep a good watch on pest and uh, friendly bio agent so when we particular grow a crop we should know what are all the bio control agents for that our pest keep ready stock of following biological agents and bio pesticides and use them as a first option bavaria bacillus subtilis pseudomonas uh, lecanicillin lecanin trichoderma trichoderma hazarium uh, neem based preparations so we should keep the stock when we start cultivation so uh, we if we adopt all these methods um, uh, definitely uh, we can reduce um, the overuse of pesticides in future and um, also the contamination of the environment we can avoid also we can you deliver a very safe food and the food security of our nation we can we can maintain uh, so these are the references so uh, thank you very much for listening this uh, webinar on uh, integrated pest management all the crops it's a very vast subject but uh, whatever the crops we grow all these tools are applied um, whatever crops we grow so 
we can uh, follow up this uh, presentation and uh, try to get um, the most benefit out of integrated risk management and even the, the the food produced through this kind of method we can have certified and we can get a good value for that through gap certificates are available or organic certificates are available so ipm is the major focus of all these uh, certificates or the, the safe food and the residue food residue free food so once again i thank you very much for attending this uh, uh, webinar arranged by jain irrigation systems limited thank you very much Water is life. We all need clean water to live, to grow crops, to thrive. But there just isn't enough water or land to feed our hungry world. Unless we change the way we grow food. That's why millions of farmers are turning to Jane. Jane is totally integrated. Totally innovative. Farmers helping farmers. The company logo reflects our holistic cycle of shared values. The sun, source of free renewable energy. Enhanced crops thanks to tissue culture plants and improved inputs. Water used sparingly and intelligently. The land protected and used wisely to deliver more. Jane has become a worldwide force in irrigation technology. The agri value chain and green energy solutions headquartered in Jalgaon India in just two generations the company that started with 7000 rupees has become a billion dollar organization the world leader in agro technology jane starts with detailed 3d designs and provides the widest range of irrigation products and solutions In this remote part of the world where there is no electricity, Jane solar powered pumps provide on-demand irrigation through a variety of Jane pipes to irrigate the roots of plants produced in Jane's own fields and greenhouses. We pioneered the use of drip tapes for row crops with the innovative Chapin tape. Thanks to our micro irrigation systems and close work with farmers, we help them grow better produce. that sells for more. We have even created a breakthrough technique to grow rice with drip irrigation. The result, better yields and better quality. Israel is known for bringing advanced irrigation to the world, and Land and Chain led the way with integral drip line and sprinklers. Chain, total integration, total technological innovation. Whether you farm 1 or 100,000 acres, No one offers a greater variety of products than Jane. On five continents, Jane is transforming the lives of farmers. Millions of farmers, 10,500 associates, more than 1,000 agro specialists, 30 production plants, sales in 116 countries, 7,000 dealers and distributors, global leaders in micro irrigation, mangrove processing, tissue culture plantlets. Pioneers in solar agro pumping, producing 40,000 kilometers of drip tube every day, with annual revenues exceeding one billion dollars, and revenue growth of 1,400 percent in just 10 years. Why is Jane different? We are a global company that built our business on results, trust, constant innovation, and total integration. We are financially strong. enjoying steady sustainable growth we believe that you need to leave the world a better place than you found it we believe in sustainability we invest heavily in our people our partners and critically our farmers food and energy security is tied to water security but with today's technology no one should ever go hungry and every farmer no matter how small or large can produce more crop per drop There is no need to fight wars over water because if used wisely we can make it last. Water is life and at Jane we are dedicated to improving life everywhere for everyone now and in the future.